Hello, I'm Michael Hughes, tenant and under tennis coordinator for the USTA's Midwest section. This video will walk through the various options for making permanent court accommodations for tenant and under tennis. We will cover blended lines, permanent 36 foot courts, pavement and parking lot courts, and walk you through how to receive technical and financial assistance from the USTA and USTA's Midwest section. Throughout the Midwest, the initial taboo of blended lines has been eliminated. The vast majority of the facilities listed on this slide have made their permanent 10 and under tennis accommodations in the last year. These facilities range from private clubs and universities to parks and elementary schools. As the 10 and under tennis movement surges into 2012, there are more than 75 facilities in the Midwest section that have made permanent accommodations for 10 and under tennis. The first option we're going to cover is blended lines. This refers to adding 10 and under tennis lines to existing tennis courts. These are referred to as blended lines because the color of the lines should be in the same color family as the court surface, thus blending them in with the court. There are countless color options you can explore with personal preference playing the key role in your decision. Just to show you some examples, you can have light blue on blue, dark blue on blue, charcoal on blue, dark green on green, or light green on green just to show a few options. Regardless of what color scheme you choose, the USTA has recommended layouts based on the space you have surrounding your courts. What I'm about to show is what's commonly referred to as a combo court. In this example, your court will end up having lines for two 36-foot courts for kids aged 8 and under and one 60-foot court for kids aged 9 and 10, along with the already existing 78-foot court. First, I will show how the lines make up a 36-foot court. The line crossing vertically through no man's land will now serve as the center line for your 36-foot court. By extending each service line from the single sideline to the double sideline, you have created one sideline of your 36-foot court, while the 78-foot court's baseline now serves as the other sideline. You will also add the 36 foot court's service marks. And your pop up net will be placed in the center of your new 36 foot court. When these lines are placed on both sides of the net, you will have two 36 foot courts, one at each baseline of the 78 foot court. In this example, the 60 foot court will share some of the same lines as the 36 foot court. The line crossing vertically through no man's land that served as the center line for your 36 foot court also doubles as the baseline for your 60 foot court. Additionally, there are two lines that run from each 60 foot baseline to the other. These will serve as the single sidelines for your 60 foot court and the court's original net will be used. Now in addition to your two 36 foot courts, you will have one 60 foot court. When having courts laid out for 36 foot play, you want to make sure there is at least 10 feet of free space between the 36 foot courts baseline and any object. Therefore, unless you have at least 20 feet in between your courts, it would not be recommended to add 36 foot lines to adjacent courts. This slide shows an example of how a bank of four courts could be lined for safe play. The outside two courts can be lined for both 36 and 60 foot play, while the inner two courts could be lined for 60 foot play only. For those of you with clay courts, there are options for adding 10 and under tennis lines on your courts. Please contact the USTA or USTA Midwest section for more information. I would encourage anyone interested in adding blended lines 
to go through the USDA Public Facility Assistance process. Not only will you receive financial support, but also vital technical support to ensure you add blended lines properly. First, you will need to fill out the Public Facility Assistance form, which can be found on USTA.com. Private facilities are welcome to fill out the Facility Assistance form for blended lines as the USTA will help to fund blended lines projects for private facilities as well. Once you have submitted the Facility Assistance form, a line grant consultant from the USTA will contact you and ask you for the following information. They will ask for three to four pictures of the courts in their existing condition, a sketch of the current court layout showing the distances from sideline to sideline, sideline to fence, baseline to fence, etc. Also, they will ask for a quote from a contractor for the total cost of the blended lines project. Keep in mind that nationally, blended lines projects cost between $250 and $450 per court. If you are receiving a quote that exceeds this range, please ask for bids from other contractors. Lastly, you will be required to complete and return a W-9. Once you have provided the pictures, sketch, contractor's quote, and W-9, the USTA will evaluate your application, make recommendations on how you should line your courts, and approve or deny you for funding. Once you are approved and the blended lines have been added to your courts, you will be required to provide three to four pictures of the finished project along with the final contractor's invoice. Once you have provided this information, a reimbursement check will be issued from both the USTA and USTA's Midwest section. As stated before, both the USTA and USTA Midwest section have funding available to help support the total cost of your project. As mentioned before, the cost to add blended lines should be between $250 and $450 per court. For this example on the slide, we will assume that we want to line four courts at a cost of $400 per court for a total cost of $1,600. The USTA will provide 50% of the total cost of the project up to $4,000. For our example, the USTA would provide $800. Additionally, the USTA Midwest section will provide 25% of the total cost of the project up to $500. Again, for our example, the USTA Midwest section will provide $400. This would leave you with a total cost of $400. Additionally, some districts in the Midwest section have additional funding to contribute. I would encourage you to contact your district office to see what they might have available. Next, I'd like to cover permanent 36-foot courts. This is Campbell Park in Wisconsin. This park had land adjacent to their tennis courts on which they wanted to add additional tennis courts and decided to build dedicated 36-foot courts. The cost for a project like this can vary drastically given different circumstances. So if you are interested in building permanent 36-foot courts from scratch, please contact a court building contractor to get an estimate. The other way to attain permanent 36-foot courts is by converting a 78-foot court into four permanent 36-foot courts. This is an example of what the process looks like. The USTA and USTA's Midwest section has funds available for both building new 36-foot courts and converting 78-foot courts into 36-foot courts. The example shown on this slide is a conversion project. The average cost to convert one 78-foot court into four 36-foot courts is between eight and $12,000. The USTA will provide 50% of the total cost of the project up to $4,000. For our example, the USTA would provide $4,000. Additionally, the USTA's Midwest section will provide 25% of the total cost of the project up to 
So, for our example, the USTA's Midwest section would provide $500. This would leave the total cost to you at $5,500. Another great option for 10 and under tennis appropriate courts are pavement and blacktop courts. This is an inexpensive way to provide a permanent 10 and under tennis facility. These are great for school playgrounds as kids can use the courts at recess or for after school programs. But they can also be used in any parking lot. Parking lot courts are great for tennis clubs because you can accommodate more players without having to use court time. The USTA and USTA's Midwest section has funds available to help cover the cost of painting lines on blacktop or pavement. The average cost for a contractor to paint lines is between $250 to $300. The USTA will provide 50% of the total cost of the project up to $4,000. So for our example, the USTA would provide $300. Additionally, the USTA's Midwest section will provide 25% of the total cost of the project up to $500. So, again, for our example, the USTA's Midwest section would provide $150. This would leave the total cost to you remaining at $150. Additionally, the USTA does provide technical specs and step-by-step -step instructions if you are interested in taking on this project yourself, which are also available on USTA.com. Lastly, we will touch on a few non-traditional options in the form of two examples. First, we have Franklin Athletic Club. This club has taken their basketball court and has covered it with a plastic-based sport court surface which allows for 10 and under tennis to be played over their basketball courts. The court doesn't scratch the basketball court and can be removed if need be. Second, the Sports Club of Novi has taken an aerobics room and turned it into a perfect arena for 10 and under tennis. In this instance, the club has actually paved the room with traditional court surface. The point to take home is to keep an open mind when looking at options for 10 and under tennis. The chances are, if you have a flat surface with enough space, you can make an accommodation for 10 and under tennis. I want to end with a few testimonials from some folks that have put down blended lines and what it has meant to their facilities. The first being from Sharon Cleland at the Midland Community Tennis Center. Sharon hits the nail on the head when mentioning that it took her adult members to actually play on the courts to accept the lines. Anyone who has played on courts with blended lines will tell you that as an adult playing on a 78 foot court you're not looking for a skinny blended line you're looking for a white line. And secondly Stephen Reed of the Wilmington Area Tennis Association points out for us that even outside of his Midwest Youth Team Tennis Program, folks in the community come out and incorporate the lines in the games that they play with their family and friends. I want to thank you for taking the time to learn a little more about the possibilities for facilities in 10 and under tennis. Please use the resources shown to help you along with your project. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.